Hello, welcome to St Nick's at Home. It's so brilliant that we are together again as church family this Sunday. I'm Fran and I'm on the leadership team and uh, I'm training for the priesthood at the moment. And in fact, I'm going to be your next curate come the uh, this, <laughs> this summer and autumn time. That's very kind, Will. Thank you. That's the first time I've heard it. Congratulations, <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, and as Fran said, my name is Will uh, and I'm part of the youth team at St Nick's. So things are beginning, I think, to find a little bit of a groove now, aren't they? I don't know how you're finding lockdown life, but in my house, I've got a husband, I've got an eight-year-old daughter, Florence, and we also have a friend who lives with us, actually. We look after him, he's not very well. So there's four of us, and i um, quite pleased that, that school, school work is now back on the kitchen table, although I am learning that they're teaching eight and nine year olds maths to a level that is stretching me a grown adult i'm not gonna lie um how is it going for you will things uh things at my home are okay uh i'm thankfully able to work from home uh and it's just grace and i in the house so we've managed uh, four weeks together now uh, we're still together we're still talking um so it's a real positive and uh, we're looking forward to the next few weeks together as well yeah i mean i know this experience is different for all of us but one thing that i've been thinking about I've been reflecting on something Steve brought to us at the parish weekend away. And it was a reading from Isaiah 54. And Steve was saying that this kind of summarizes the season that we are in as a church. And if you remember, it says, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, strengthen your stakes, lengthen your cords. And I'm thinking that a lot of the peripheral stuff is being stripped away in this time, like all the racing around, the commuting, the, uh, the mm. shopping, the buying things we don't really need. And it's a time perhaps to come back to what actually matters, what matters with us and God, what faith is, what it means to us, a time to strengthen the stakes. So I feel challenged to do that in this time. Then perhaps mm. there is a little bit of uh, space and focus where we can do that. And I'm sure that God is inviting us as a church to do that too. And later on in the service, we are going to hear from God's word and there'll be a chance to really dig in to our relationship with him. Mm. So we're going to worship, but before we do, let's just have a moment to pause and, and reflect and invite the Holy Spirit. And using Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So let's enter this worship together, full of faith. Let's praise him today. to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, brothers and sisters, draw near. Praise Him in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do, who with his love doth befriend thee. Praise to the Lord who doth nourish thy life and restore thee, fitting thee well for the tasks that are ever before thee. Then to thy need he 
like a mother doth speed, spreading the wings of grace over thee. Praise to the Lord, oh, let all that is in me adore Him. All that have life and breath come now with praises before Him. Let the Amen sound from His people again. Gladly for a we adore Him. Sing, let the Amen. Let the Amen sound from His people again. Gladly for a we adore Him. Thanks, Ben. It's good to sing those old hymns now and then, isn't it? Love that. Uh, I hope you are singing along, by the way, at home. In fact, if you want to play along as well as sing, then Ben is going to post a link to the chord chart of the final song. It's going to be a simple song, and it's one that you might want to get your guitar, get the kids to uh, maybe do some percussion, because that always helps me worship. Um, we'll do that later on. Now, there have been some encouragements. We love it when you get in touch and um, tell us what's going on, what God is doing in your life. Will? Yes, uh, Alpha has happened this week uh, online, so congratulations to the team, and uh, hello if you were there. Um, there's still time to join, just head to satenix.org forward slash alpha, uh, and you'll be able to sign up there. We will be praying for you guys. Uh, and also another thing that's gone online this week is English for Life. So well done to Mick, Joe, to Lisa and Alex, uh, well done on getting that online, and we'll be praying for you and the team as you can con continue to deliver your English lessons. Online. It's, it's great to see how we can actually do church and be family and do all the stuff that St Nick's does through things like Zoom and the communities are going on, um, going really strong. So yeah, technology can be a wonderful thing. Just a quick hello to Rebecca who's emailed to say that she was really nervous about moving to Daybrook. Um, not moving as such, but with the lockdown starting, she didn't really know anyone, so she was worried about feeling isolated. Well, she prayed that she could build some relationships, and with a bit of action on her part, sending cards around to the neighbours at Easter and whatnot, she, um, she's got to know quite a few people. In fact, someone actually put an Easter egg on her doorstep on Easter Day. Uh, so now she's having great conversations, and she's really thankful to God that he's blessed her with some people, and she's blessing them with, uh, with prayers. So well done, Rebecca. Any encouragements you want to share with us, then you can email them, encouragements at stnicks.org. Now, time to dig in to God's word. And earlier I was talking about how I feel like God is prompting me, certainly, to strengthen the stakes of my relationship with him in this season. Something that Steve brought to us at the parish weekend as a vision for the whole church, that we strengthen our stakes. And Steve now is going to bring to life John chapter 21. He's talking about Jesus and how he calls us to follow him afresh every day. Steve. Well, today we're looking at the final resurrection appearance recounted by John in his gospel. It comes in John chapter 21. What do you do after you've been through an extraordinary time? Can you just return to normal? That's a question raised by the passage. It's pretty pertinent to us today. So let's hear the passage read now. John chapter 21. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm Elise. And I'm Tasha. And we're all members of Sit Next Youth. So today we'll be reading from John 21. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but disciples, the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. 
He said, throw your net out on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to hold the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were, they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all these things and you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumour spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who took testifies to these things and he wrote them down we know that his testimony is true Jesus did many other things as well if every one of them were written down I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written this is the word of the Lord thanks, thanks be, be to God. God thank you well how's your week gone are you getting used to this strange life or are you desperate to get back to what was normality? That's the question that's been in the media this week. When will restrictions be lifted? When, we can when can we just get on with our own lives? I guess we've all got our list of uh, things that we would love to do when life returns to normal. I'm going to get in the car. I'm going to visit with Jane, our new grandson, who was born three weeks ago. We've been watching him daily on the phone but it's not quite the same as holding him i'm going to see my old mum and i'm going to hug you i'm going to hug you indiscriminately when we return to church because isn't that something you've just missed that close contact with our brothers and sisters but there are things that i i have really appreciated about this time and i'm appreciating i love the fact that we can hear the birds i love the quiet roads it's great for cycling I love the fact that we are learning to honour people in occupations that previously maybe we have not particularly valued. I love the applause for the NHS on a Thursday night. And I love the fact that old Captain Tom is top of the charts. Who would have believed it? Well, the question is this. Can we 
return to normal? Do we want to return to normal? Does God want us to return to normal? What does he want to do in us during this time? This passage, John chapter 21, is a, a remarkable chapter. Scholars have debated whether it should be included in John's Gospel because John chapter 20 seems like a perfectly good ending. But all the ancient manuscripts we have, bar one, of John's Gospel includes chapter 21 and it seems to be rooted in the whole narrative but it's taking us back to Galilee. Most of John's Gospel has been set around Jerusalem. We've not been in Galilee since chapter 7 and after all that the disciples have been through, all the trauma of Jesus' arrest and crucifixion and all the joy and exuberance of his resurrection appearances, the question starts to arise, well, what now? The resurrection appearances seem to be coming to an end. What do we do? And it's very natural to just def to default to what is familiar. And so in this passage, Peter, as usual, is the one who takes the initiative and he says, I'm going fishing. They've returned from Jerusalem to Galilee. They've returned from this extraordinary life of following Jesus for three years to routine jobs, to fishing. I'm going fishing. They're not even 12 disciples now. There are just seven of them here. The Galileans seem to have all gathered around Peter, and so off they go, they go fishing. But fishing is so frustrating. They've sh fished all night, they've caught nothing, and this, this stranger appears on the shore. He says, hey guys, have, have you caught anything? And they said, no. And he said, cast your net on the other side. And so they do that. And then the beloved disciple, probably John, recognizes this is Jesus and Peter gets out of the boat and he wades to the shore and he has this remarkable conversation with Jesus. He thought that he could just return to normal but there's no returning to BC. There's no returning to life as it was. I think that some things are definitely going to change the economy certainly has changed and that will severely affect many of us. As a church, we have to wake up to the fact that life online is so important to so many people. And I guess that uh, we will do, be discovering whole new ways of working. We've discovered through this experience that we're intensely local. We've woken up to our neighbours. We've woken up to that little patch of land on which each of us lives. But we've also woken up to the fact that we're intensely global. No beautiful wall is going to keep a virus away. We are intri intricately, intricately connected uh, in every way. And we have to recognise that that is the world in which we live. One of the things I've noticed during this time is that the old uh, lies of those salvation narratives that society tells have been, been shown up for what they are. You know that salvation narrative that we tell in our society. I once was had a boring life, but then I discovered my self-belief. I discovered the treasure within. And I went around the world having wonderful experiences and I've photographed myself and posted all those pictures on Instagram and Facebook and I've been validated by becoming a celebrity. Well, that salvation narrative has been blown out of the water. You can't take, uh, you can't tour the world anymore. You can't even look good on a, on a photograph because you can't have your hair cut. There has to be something more and people are turning to uh, with spiritual questions. Google searches on prayer have gone through the roof and I believe this is a real time of opportunity. It's a time when potentially God could do something really profound. All the revivals of uh, recent centuries 
have arisen out of immense disruption. We're going through a time of immense disruption. But I believe that if we are going to emerge from this time and not just try to pick up where we were, then God has to do something profound in our hearts. And I think this, this passage from John chapter 21 and Jesus' conversation with Peter has something to ask us and some pointers for us during this season. So after the meal, Peter and Jesus have a personal conversation. And Jesus asks Peter a question, do you love me? And I think for us, this question comes to us very profoundly during this time. Do I really love Jesus? Or do I just love all the trappings of being a Christian? All the social benefits of being a Christian? Do I love being in church together and worshiping? Do I love my community times? Or do I really love Jesus? This season, is an invitation for us to love him more. And the second thing that comes out of this passage is the question, do I really love his people? So Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep, feed my flock. And I've been so heartened by the way in which um, Members of the church have shown such care for one another during this time. They've demonstrated we really do love one another. But I think that Jesus is calling us to a deeper love for one another. Not to take each other for granted. To reach out beyond our comfort and to uh, look after one another and really care for one another, pray for one another like we never have before. Thirdly, there's a question, am I willing to have my plans disrupted? Because as Jesus talks to Peter, it becomes clear that Peter's future is going to be different to what he'd hoped. Very truly, he, Jesus says, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. And Peter had to come to terms with that. And I think that during this season, Jesus is asking us this question. Are we willing to be taken to places that we never envisaged? Are we willing for our life to be written in a way that we wouldn't have written it? Fourthly, the question comes to us, Am I willing to follow Jesus regardless of everyone else? During this conversation, Peter looks around and he sees the beloved disciple, probably John, following behind. And he says, well, what about him? And Jesus says, well, what does it matter? If I wanted him to live until I return, that, that's, that's fine. But you... You follow me. And so the fourth question comes to us, am I willing to follow Jesus regardless of everyone else? Or is, is my Christian life often just about keeping up with what everyone else is doing? And I think that this season is an opportunity for us to face that question and to love Jesus and to follow Jesus to love his people, to be willing for him to disrupt our plans, for us to love him regardless of what everyone else does, as if for the first time. I pray that when we return, we don't just pick up life where it was. I think that would be tragic. When we return, we must have taken in something deep from God during this time. We must have faced these questions and we must have allowed our hearts and our minds and our practices to change. And I think if we do, then God can do great things. This is my prayer for all of us, that we do not return to normal. 
but that we respond to Jesus and we return following him as if for the first time in the great power of his resurrection. Amen. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone every breath that I take every moment I'm away Lord have your way you have your way, Lord. This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord have your way in me, and Lord I give you my heart. Give you my soul, and I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way. Lord, I thank you for thank you for Steve. I thank you for the words that he speaks. And I pray that we'd all know our love for you. I pray that your spirit would guide us, help us to, to learn more of you, to love you more. And I pray that we would be challenged this week to share our faith and have the confidence to express our love in you to others. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, I love the observation that all this peripheral stuff, as I said at the beginning, um, it, it is being stripped away and we're left with, with a relationship and a, an mm -hmm. invitation to follow Jesus. That's essentially at the heart of this, isn't it? And last week, Gareth and Angelica recommended a book and it's called The Liturgy of the Ordinary. And uh, 
there's a chapter in it that this week I think really speaks to what we've been learning together. It's called Waking. So uh, Tish, who wrote the book, has taken little things about the day and written some encouragements around them. And the waking up part of the day um, is, is for her something that highlights how we are all completely together in our disheveledness when we wake up. I mean, obviously, Will looks as handsome as he does now. You know, the moment his eyes open. But, you know, my hair is just explosive and my breath is... <laughs> um, and we're all kind of in that boat of having done nothing. We're sleepy. We're vulnerable, actually, you know, in our beds, whether you're the, a world leader or a little child. And her point is that that's kind of like a baptism of an infant where we're reminded that it's nothing that we do that gets... Uh, us loved by God that gets us um, forgiven by God. It's all about his grace and it's all about his mm. love for us and the call he has on our lives. Um, mm. And Will, for you, you noticed in that chapter that even Jesus' baptism speaks to that. Yeah. Before Jesus has carried out any of his ministry, he gets baptized and God says, you are my son in whom I am well pleased. And God says that to us. He loves us before we've done anything in that moment that we just wake up god loves us there's nothing that we can do that can change that yeah, yeah. and um, now we're going to move into a time of prayer and we just uh like to encourage you to engage in this and we're really excited because rich and his family are bringing the prayers over to you rich thanks very much yes my name's rich and i'm the children and families minister here at st nick's and I'm here with my family to lead you in prayers from my home. Hi, I'm Martha. I'm Leah. Hi, I'm Laura. Hi, I'm Isa. Let us pray. Dear God, I pray that Boris Johnson is better and the government chooses the right choices. Amen. 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 Lord, pray for the sick. I pray for those that are unwell at this time. May you bring them comfort. May you be their healer. And Lord, we also pray for those that are caring for the sick. We pray for the doctors, for the nurses, for the care workers and all other people who are helping. Lord, may you give them guidance. May you give them skill. Amen. Amen. I pray for the people who are isolated and lonely because they, they're not allowed to see anyone in this time. Amen. Amen. Uh, dear Lord, I pray for those people finishing school, children in year 11 particularly, because some of them might think, oh, some of them are probably quite worried because they might think that we might not come back to school until next year, which is very worrying for them because they'll be like, oh no, I won't be able to see my friends, and that will be quite upsetting for them. So we hope that we'll be able to go back to school before the end of the year. Amen. 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 And my prayer is for everyone who's watching this video right now, you in your homes. And I pray that you will know God's presence in your homes. I pray for those of you who've got homeschooling, who are having to work at home, those who've got financial challenges with your business. And we ask you, Lord, in your mighty strength, to meet our needs. Amen. 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 And now we're going to lead you in saying the Lord's Prayer. Please join in, in your homes, in your own language, in the version you're familiar with. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great 
are you, Lord? Sing, you give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, and it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you, oh. our love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you Lord it's your breath our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry and these bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry and these bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry and these bones will sing great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Thanks, Ben. Love that song. Hope you were playing along. Look at this rig guitar. You can borrow that it from is... Will. Absolutely perfect. I, I would love that in my house. That's great. It's Florence's. <laughs> obviously Florence's. Of course, of course. Um, do you ground if you'd like some prayer? Just hit the uh, live prayer button on the stream and someone will, will be in touch with you to pray with you. 
And it's just so great to be together, isn't it? And spend this time together. Uh, if you like the sound of that book, it's called The Liturgy of the Ordinary. You'll have had details on email about how you can get hold of it. The blessing will. Great. So God the Father, who has given to his son the name above every name, strengthen us to proclaim Christ as Lord. And so the blessing, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.